This is the story of how I took an architectural project that existed completely in my imagination and turned it into the ultimate form of ArcViz presentation using Unreal Engine 5. Okay, in this video I'm super excited because it's a culmination of things I've been working on for a couple months now of just trying to experiment with like my idea of the ultimate Unreal Engine project. I think Unreal Engine is amazing because of the quality in which you can walk through your scene in real time using Unreal Engine but also because of the custom interaction that you can add to your scene. So this started as just something in my imagination, a design that existed completely in my head. I used 3ds Max to create models of it, V-Ray to add textures to it. Then from there, I went into Unreal Engine and turned it into a real-time experience. And I also leveraged the power of blueprints within Unreal Engine to make it fully interactive. I think it's awesome. I think it's probably the single greatest way to communicate a design idea to a client. And when you consider the fact that you could also take it into VR goggles, then really the sky's the limit. So I wanna show you how I did all that starting from the beginning and I'll demonstrate, show you everything I went through to get to the finished product, which we'll see at the end, which I think you will think is really cool. I know I do, and I had a ton of fun creating it for sure. Let's check it out from the beginning. When you first have an idea for an architectural design, you have to think about the best way to communicate it to others. At least, that is what I do. That is literally my job as an ArcBiz artist. In this case, the idea was my own, so I was free from the constraints of budgets and deadlines, so I knew I could go all out. With all the different tools I know, what would that look like? For me, the ultimate way to communicate a design idea has got to be using a fully interactive, real-time walkthrough of your project. It's like when you're shopping for a house, and it's the difference between seeing some bad online photos versus actually going to the house, walking through it, and imagining the renovations that you're gonna make. Which one of these is better? With Unreal Engine, you can do a walkthrough either as a desktop experience, or you can even walk through it with VR goggles and feel like you're actually in the space. Either way, the tool is the same. It has to be Unreal Engine 5. This gives me the most control, the most possibilities, and probably the most quality too. So I decided that this is where I was going to end up. But first, the start. Modeling is the beginning of every ArcViz project. There is no getting around that. In this case, I use 3ds Max, and I can't discount V-Ray here either. I use V-Ray Cosmos extensively for filling out my scene with furniture and detail items. I also use several Cosmos materials. Even when I wanted to create fully custom materials, V-Ray was what I used. It is what I'm most comfortable with, and huge bonus, it translates very well into Unreal Engine. That brings us to Datasmith. Datasmith is an extremely essential element to this whole thing for me. Remember what a huge pain it used to be to take your 3ds Max project into Unreal? I was always running all sorts of half-baked scripts off the internet, trying to convert V-Ray materials to standard ones, and adding a UVW unwrap to every object? No more. Datasmith takes care of all that instantly and much, much better. With Datasmith, my 3ds Max V-Ray scene came directly into Unreal Engine and was running quite nicely right out of the box. If you saw my video about this, you know I had a few issues, but in the end, it was basically user error. Once I figured it out, it performed amazingly, and I was really satisfied with the translation it did from V-Ray to real time. One note, I do prefer to not bring in my V-Ray lights, and to set them up in Unreal Engine from scratch instead. I found that I like the control and organization better of the natively created Unreal Engine lights rather than the ones translated from V-Ray. This brings up another point. Datasmith does an amazing job of translating your models and materials, especially, 
But there are some things that should definitely be left for Unreal Engine, in my opinion. Doing it this way also gives me an excuse to use the absolutely awesome collection of Megascans assets. Megascans is free to use for anyone within Unreal Engine, and sometimes I simply can't believe such high quality assets are just given away. They work very seamlessly, and they look really good. In this case, I used a few of the materials and a bunch of the natural assets for the surrounding woods in my scene. This, in my opinion, is where Megascans really shines. Speaking of the woods, the trees are all completely made up of Megascans trees as well, which also perform and look great. Using the global foliage actor, you can control the tree health, the wind, the seasons, colors, etc., and everything just works. As you'll see later, you can access all of this via blueprint and control the weather and season with simple interactions and scripting as well. These were a fantastic way to quickly add detail and realism to the scene. As you can see, I used Megascans extensively to build up different layers of nature. A dirt surface, plus mottled gravel and boulders, plus gravel decals, plus fallen leaf decals all placed effortlessly with the Unreal Engine foliage tools. Amazing. I mentioned that I set up my lighting directly in Unreal Engine too. I organized them in groups so that I could easily edit them together. If you don't know, I am obsessed with using V-Ray Light Mix to tweak the lighting of my scenes carefully. So boy was I excited when Unreal Engine added its own version of Light Mix. Of course, everything is already in real time, so you don't even have to render first. You just get endless lighting possibilities for your scene, quickly and easily. Set the mood however you want. I went for a kind of warm, cozy interior on a cool fall morning in the woods. Speaking of that, I used an HDRI and volumetric fog for all the environmental lighting. If you want to learn more about any of this, like HDRIs or using Megascans trees or even animating in Unreal Engine, just check out the relevant video links below. I've made videos about a lot of these things that go more in depth. But beyond that, I also teach all of this stuff in in-depth courses and go into full detail and full projects about how this works. And since it's Black Friday time of year, allow me to share with you some of the deals I have going on. Hey everybody, I want to tell you about something that's exciting for me and possibly exciting for you too. And that is the fact that I have all my courses on sale right now. So if you like any of the things that you see in this video and need to polish your skills or learn them for the first time on anything relating to ArcViz, all the skills that come together to make an awesome project, I teach all of it. So regardless of which part of ArcViz you're hoping to do or to learn about, please check out the courses. This is the best time of year to buy them. It's a lifetime purchase, so you will have access to all of it as I add it in the future. That is particularly beneficial for what I'm showing in this video with the Unreal Engine because that is being added to the Unreal Engine course where I already have a full project from beginning to end with cinematics and rendering animations out of Unreal Engine. But now we're adding this content to show how to make a project fully interactive. So this project from this video will be added going in depth to how do I create all the interaction. And some of it's already there. I'll be adding the rest of it in the upcoming days and weeks. So like I said, any purchase is lifetime access. I recommend buying it now because it's Black Friday and this is the cheapest time of year to buy any of my stuff. So just check out the links. You'll see what all the deals are. For Unreal Engine, you can get like seven or eight hours of instruction plus all the future stuff I'm adding. And the cost is absurdly low. So... If you find this stuff valuable, if you want to learn any of this stuff, just check it out. Now, let's get back to this project. Okay, we have talked about setting up a scene and making it look nice in real time. But big deal, lots of real time options out there can do that. 
Yes, but I would argue that Unreal Engine has the ability to look a lot better than some of those other options. But also, it is what it can do beyond just looking good that really sets it apart. My next step was to add custom navigation. This is where things start to get good. Unreal Engine certainly isn't the only program that allows you to walk around your scene in real time, but it does provide way more customization than any other tools out there. In my case, I added standard first person navigation setup from a template and modified it just a little bit. But as we'll see later, this character can be combined with blueprints to be able to interact with its environment, have customized menus and more. I haven't done it yet with this project, but in the past, I've even made full VR scenes where a user can move objects, change furniture, change materials, all while standing inside of a virtual design. This is only made possible by the powerful tools and customization available with Unreal. For the final step to achieving the ultimate presentation with full interactivity, it is necessary to leverage the power of blueprints within the engine. This is a proprietary block coding language that is built in and can be added to basically any object within your Unreal Engine scene. Combining small bits of code with your 3D models, materials, lights, etc. unlocks endless possibilities. In my case, I started to add lights that could be turned on and off, materials that could be changed, and seasons that could be modified. This of course can be taken to whatever level you want because again, it's all custom. In theory, all your lights and materials could be fully adjustable to the end user or the client. You could even program in different furniture options for a client to explore interactively. In fact, I think I'm going to do that next. It sounds rad. The important thing to know here is that coding sounds scary to some, but blueprints are much more approachable, in my opinion. I'm amazed at how powerful they can actually be and how relatively simple they are once you understand some key concepts. Oh, and the final thing about blueprints, they make 3D so much fun. They add a whole other layer of creativity to your 3D models and can bring them to life in new and exciting ways. I love, love, love creating interactions for my 3D models, especially in this way where I don't have to get hung up on proper syntax or anything like that. Don't be afraid of blueprints, be excited about them. Now, let's look at where the scene has ended up with all my little interactions. Okay, so here is the project as I have it now. This is what it looks like in the editor. I just think it's so cool that you can just zoom around at this speed, see everything up close and personal. All your imagination coming to life in real time. It's just cool. Seeing your meticulously modeled and materialed objects come into the scene and look totally realistic and render in real time. It's great. So let's start this thing and see what it looks like. Hit play. Bring up my simple menu. Let's look outside. We can change the season to spring. Change it to summer. Make it a little brighter outside. Set up a basic button for the stone color. If we don't like the white, we could change it to black. And that's more of a prototype for how we could change all any material in our scene if we wanted. Via menu or via a blueprint that you walk up to and hit a button, toggle, various different things you could do. And that's the awesome part. It's all customizable and can be as interactive as you want to make it. Like in the summer look, the doors open. Let's turn off. It's daytime, so we can turn off some of these accent lights. And with Lumen, this all becomes so easy, too. You don't have to bake anything. You don't have to count how many movable lights you've got. And the movable lights don't bog down your scene in an insane way. Lumen just makes it so much easier to work with. And it's fantastic. I think, I think this looks super high quality, 
Really good. It's not perfect, but it is very good for real-time rendering. The best I've seen as far as like the full power of the interactivity, the, the great lighting that's happening in real time, the quasi ray tracing that Lumen is doing. It's all just pretty incredible. So there you go, walking through your own imagination, your own designs in an incredibly realistic and engaging way. I think this could have an amazing effect for ArcViz artists to be able to show something like this to a client. Anyway, I absolutely love this. Let's change it back to fall, turn it down, light a little bit, a little more moody, like where we started. I absolutely love this. This is not only an incredibly powerful tool for communicating your designs and your ideas, but it is also extremely fun. I absolutely love, loved creating this project. And I hope you like the result. Let me know in the comments what you think. What else can I do with the interaction here to make it even more engaging? Obviously, I could make more materials changeable, more lights to turn on and off, all that kind of stuff. And obviously, this is not a, a beautiful UI, but I use these as kind of a basic structure for what can be done. So I can expand upon all of this, make it look prettier, make it function in different ways, and also apply it to different parts of my scene. So you let me know what kind of interaction would be cool to see in here. And I'm sure we can figure, out, figure it out. Blueprints makes it easy and fun. As always, thanks for watching. Let me hear from you in the comments about what you think about this project. And if you think it's cool, make sure to subscribe because I'll be talking a lot more about how I did all these things and sharing some tutorials about some of the things I did here. I think that will be of interest to you. Okay, thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.